In order to make many 3D plots in Origin, such as this color map surface plot, you need to have your data in a matrix window. Matrices have numbered columns which are mapped to linearly spaced X values and numbered rows which are mapped to linearly spaced Y values. Each cell value in a matrix represents a Z value. Typically your data is first imported into a workbook. So we then need an easy way to convert it to a matrix form. In this tutorial, I will show you how to convert worksheet data to a matrix when the X and Y values are present in the first column in one of the column label rows. We begin with a worksheet that has excitation emission data typical in spectroscopy. The excitation wavelength is stored in a user-defined column label row by that name. A double click on the column label row edge will auto size so we can read the full name. In this example, it is this row that stores the X values, but your data could have been imported such that the values were in the long name or comments and that row could have been used as well. So any header row will work. The emission wavelength, which are the Y values, again let me do that double click. It will auto size so we can read the full text. It's this emission wavelength, this column, that contains the Y values. So it's the first column in the worksheet. And then the rest of the columns, or the rest of the cells in the worksheet, are the Z values for each X and Y. With the worksheet active, I select the worksheet menu, convert to matrix, direct. The data is already set up in a matrix form. So we just need to do a direct conversion to the origin matrix. The other options, such as the XYZ gridding, will be used if your data is in a different form, such as just three columns designated as X, Y, and Z. In the conversion options, I'll change the data format to X across columns, since our X values are in the excitation wavelength row. So we specify that the X values are in a header row and that header row is excitation wavelength. So this drop-down list will show you all the column label rows available for you to choose. Remember the Y values were in the first column, so we check that checkbox. Again, keep in mind that the requirement of the matrix is that your X and Y values must be evenly spaced. Typically in experimental data, there is some variation in X and Y, therefore some tolerance is allowed. You can press the Help button or the F1 key for documentation to read more about all the conversion options in this dialog. The output matrix is set to New, meaning a new matrix window will be created when I click OK. To view the linearly spaced X and Y values, I click View, Show XY. Now the actual XY coordinate values of the matrix are shown. I'll tile the worksheet and the matrix so that you can see that the X values in the worksheet match the values in the top header of the matrix. And as for the Y, the matrix left header are very close to the values in the first column in the worksheet. Origin interpolated the values so they are evenly spaced. If there is too much deviation in X or Y values in the raw data, you would need to, con to first convert the worksheet to three columns X, Y, Z, and then use a gridding method to make a matrix window. But that's a topic for another movie. Now matrices can be viewed as data or as images. I'll select View and change the mode to Image Mode. The dimensions of the matrix are such that there are more rows than columns, and this Image Mode displays maintaining the aspect ratio. To create a 3D plot from our matrix, we simply select the Plot menu. The 3D surface plots are available as well as contour plots. Let's go ahead and do a contour color fill. The reminder message is telling us about speed mode. From the graph menu, I can turn speed mode off to display all the points. The 
This concludes the tutorial. Thank you for watching.